follow us in a fresh copy of Call to Adventure, The Name of the Wind, which is the first expansion to the base game by Brother Wise Games. Call to Adventure is a card game where you develop your adventure story by gaining traits and achieving challenges by throwing these ruins and adding these cards to your tableau. The game is based off the novel and the icons and the cards match what is contained within the novel. Each card you gain will be placed behind one of these three cards that you choose as your starting character at the beginning of the game. For me, I am a merchant who is bound by honor and I am one with nature. Each card gives an individual ability written in the text below, with the last card giving you a way to gain in-game points. For me, once per turn when I fail a blue or purple challenge, I may pay two experience points to try it again. When I overcome a challenge by one or less, I can gain an extra experience point, and at the end of the game, I can gain five points if I have a blue, yellow, or purple symbol on one of my cards and one point for each nature symbol in my story. So act one through three cards are laid out above here and everyone will start on act one. You will gain three cards from above to add to each of the beginning three cards down here. So at the end of the game you might have around 12 cards total. To gain a trade, it will be explained in the text if you can take it or what you have to do to get it. For example, if it, I want adventurous here because it has this nature symbol and I'm trying to be one with nature. So if I had a red symbol, then I can take the card or I can spend an experience point to get it. Well, I don't have a red symbol yet, so I will pay this one experience point and take this card and slide it under this first card here. On a challenge, it will list a number and possibly two icons, sometimes one. These are the types of traits that I need to use for this challenge. Red is constitution and blue is intelligence. I then look back at my character to see if I have any of those traits. So I have one of each. Great. Awesome. So when performing a challenge, I will automatically gain my three core ruins no matter what. One side shows a strike mark, which will add one to my challenge, and the other sides are blank except for this one that would not help with the challenge per se, but would also give me either a hero or an anti-hero card. If you look at your player board, it will list these symbols and what the outcomes might be from them. When using the ability ruins, one side will have the strike mark, which would count as one, and the other side will have the ability symbol, which counts as two. If I had more constitution or more intelligence for my character, I would be able to use more ruins of that ability up to three. The third special ability ruin, which is only used if you have three of them, is special and instead of a strike mark on one side, it will give you a bonus of some sort. So now with my three core ruins and my two ability ruins, I will need to roll a four or higher as this is the number stated on this challenge. You will then choose if you would like to attempt the top or the bottom of the card. So this is a dangerous artifact, so my choice is do I want to harness dark power and gain an anti-hero card and an intelligence ability, or do I want to resist temptation and gain a divinity icon and a constitution ability? Some challenges will have a plus one list on the bottom, adding a plus one to the difficulty or number stated above. So I will attempt to harness dark power to gain this dangerous artifact. After rolling, I will gain any of the icons that give me anything, and then I will count up my strikes and my icons to see if I was successful or not. On a success, the card is then added to my tableau. If unsuccessful, then the card will be discarded, and I would gain one experience point. Now let's go back to adding ruins before rolling when attempting a challenge, because if you would like to pay an extra experience point, you can roll a dark ruin. Dark ruins have a strike on one side, worth one, and a moon on the other side that's worth two for the challenge. But if the moon is rolled, then I would have to move one space down on my corruption track. This corruption track will first show what type of cards that you can play, 
if here and above, then you can play hero cards, and here and below, you can play anti-hero cards. At the end of the game, wherever you are on the corruption track, it will show you the amount of points that you will gain. So you can be corrupt and still score points unless you are so dark that you will eventually lose points. Also, if on the bottom here, you won't be able to cast any dark ruins. You will then be forming your own story, choosing what challenges and traits and possibly even an adversary that you might fight. After a player has gained three cards under their first card, Act 2 cards will then be available. Again, three cards under your second card, Act 3 will then be available. Then, at the point when a player has gained three cards under each of their starting cards, each player will have one more turn. Points will then be awarded, and each player will flip over their destiny card and count destiny points. Triumph points are in white, and tragedy points are in black. These points might be located on your cards in your tableau, or on a hero or anti-hero cards that you played. Each pair of story icons is worth two points, three of a kind is worth four points, and a four of a kind is worth eight points. Each experience point is worth a point. Remember that you also have triumph or tragedy points awarded on your corruption track. Lastly, add all those points to the number of points you gain according to your destiny card, and the player with the highest score wins. Now the best part of the game is then taking turns telling the story of your character. As a merchant bound by honor, which honor was one of my families, I vowed to expand the merchant line. In this honor and being adventurous, I left the village to travel to the large city nearby. On my travels, I encountered a dangerous artifact that I harnessed by using dark power. I then kept that artifact and arrived to the city. The city was preparing for war and, and instead of planning the city's defense, which matched my skill set a little better, I decided to build fortifications. Some of the officials didn't like that idea and one corrupt man came after me. I wasn't going to have this, so I resisted the arrest and joined a caravan that was leaving town, heading toward the desert. I joined them and ended up surviving the harsh journey until some men captured us. I managed to eventually break out of captivity with my skills and ran the opposite direction. Things just kept getting crazier and crazier as I encountered a rogue elemental in which I ended up extinguishing. I then met up with an army that led into a demon horde and drove them back. And I ended up returning with this army back to their land where the queen invited me to her chambers. This is where I won the queen's favor and became the lead of her army. And that's my story, and I'm not even a good storyteller myself, but wow, this is a fun game. The story just gets better and better. Why? Because the expansion, The Name of the Wind, follows the course of the King Killer Chronicle by Patrick Rothfuss. In this expansion, you have more possible origins, motivations, and destinies to use to start your character at the beginning of the game. There are 53 new story cards that will be used in all three acts, 16 new hero and anti-hero cards, and 5 new adversary quests, and the game introduces naming, a system of magic that is driven by deep understanding. The expansion keeps all the goals of the game the same, but it just introduces new cards. When playing with the expansion, you will need to visit the list and set aside certain cards that won't be needed when playing with the expansion. Many of the icons should look familiar, but in addition, a music icon is added. Points are awarded the same. So the biggest thing the expansion will add is naming. Let's talk about that. You'll be able to have a chance to learn the name of the wind, fire, and iron. Now this can only be done if it's during your turn and you fail a challenge you will then be able to have an attempt at a name. You will look at the cards in your tableau and see if you have any icons that match fire, wind, or iron. And you gain plus one for each icon that matches the type you are attempting to name. 
Each type also has two ability icons associated with it, and if you have both of those in your story, then you gain another plus one to your attempt. For example, in an attempt of naming fire, if you have the red and the green icons, constitution and wisdom, in your story, then you can add plus one to your attempt. There are only three different hero, anti-hero cards that can be used when naming. You will then take the three core ruins and toss them without being able to add any other ruins to them, not even the dark ruins, and if your attempt ends up being a four or higher, then you learn that name. If you end up rolling the ruin with the black and the white triangles, you will not be able to take any of the hero or anti-hero cards. You're just tossing the core ruins for the result only. If you succeed though, you will gain the token and from that point forth, whenever you encounter a path that has that icon, and you can use the side of the card that the icon is on for free without having to cast any ruins. Just remember that when doing this, you can only take the path where the icon is shown, as the other part of the card might have a different path without the icon, and you will not be able to take that card and add that side of the card to your story unless you cast the ruins like normal. Naming definitely helps players have an additional chance to do something productive when they fail a challenge. It always felt bad to just gain one experience point when failing a mission. So having plans to name if a challenge doesn't go the way that you thought can be a great backup plan. But it's not a guaranteed thing. You still have to plan and work toward having at least certain ruins or icons in your story to be able to have an outcome of four or higher because even on a perfect roll of three, you still are short one. The name The Win refreshes the game and adds different cards and new challenges. I wouldn't say it's a must have, but it always is nice to have new ideas and cards in a game. The naming is also helpful as it changes your plans and each token that you gain is worth three points at the end of the game and also could help you gain something awesome later. So it would definitely be worth using naming in your strategy or having it at least as a backup plan. And now I call you to the adventure in Call to Adventure by Brother Wise Games. Again, this is Board Game Brody. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stick around and check out some other board game reviews to see what you might want to get to the table. This turn I will command and name the flame.